Station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Great Monday evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9. I'm Thismeen Mafus. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Flanagan. We begin to the major announcement for Metro. Officials say repairs are now complete after a Metro train derailed near Reagan National Airport. Metro says a fallen disc break caused Friday's derailment. An investigation revealed Metro had 32 out of 102 rail cars with loose bolts. Transit agency says all 2000 and 3000 series rail cars were removed from service. The derailment of the blue and yellow lines caused some delays as crews worked on repairs. No passengers were hurt. And there have been almost 300 complaints of sexual harassment in D.C. and the government since 2017. This is all according to reporting from The Washington Post. Our Daniel Hamburg is live in the newsroom tonight with reaction from Mayor Bowser. And Daniel, she's planning to update the district's policy. Yeah, this mean uh, after uh, she made an executive order in 2017 to investigate complaints, the D.C. Council passed a law last year to broaden the definition of sexual harassment, but Mayor Bowser still has not updated her order. Since December 2019, 290 D.C. employees filed complaints of sexual harassment, according to the Washington Post, with just under 30 percent substantiated in full or in part, 40 percent were unsubstantiated or were found inconclusive. We want to send the, uh, the very clear message that we want to be a sexual harassment free workplace. Mayor Muriel Bowser called her 2017 executive order among the most progressive in the country as a proactive measure in the wake of the Me Too movement. I still don't think we have a pervasive problem. I want to be clear. We're talking about 290 complaints right now. The number you just spit out over 34,000 employees over five years. We don't want any. But she says the complaints mean people are comfortable coming forward. Last year, the D.C. Council passed a law eliminating the 2017 standard that sexual harassment has to be severe and pervasive enough to create a hostile working environment. But Bowser has yet to update her order, even after two complaints against former Deputy Chief of Staff John Falcecchio led to his resignation. I don't know why we didn't or if it wasn't um, a focus of kind of getting that law changed over to the mayor's order. It should happen and it will happen. Now, the council, the council is also expected to take up legislation from council member Brianne Nadeau uh, going off of her temporary emergency legislation earlier this summer to make it a requirement for an independent investigation for any sexual harassment complaints against any mayoral appointee or top D.C. official. Live in the newsroom, Daniel Hamburg, D.C. News Now. Daniel, thanks. We're also learning more tonight about a Friday night crash that killed four teenagers in Mitchellsville, Maryland. Prince George's County police say that car was stolen in an armed carjacking earlier that day. Now, officers say they tried to stop the car for expired tags, but the car sped off and a chase ensued. About two and a half miles from that traffic stop, we're told the driver lost control, crashed into a tree and burst into flames. This happened on Woodmore Road, killing four teenagers inside. Family members say two of the teens were 15 year old Serenity Selman and 17 year old Dertrell Byers and both students at Flowers High School in Springdale. Now we're also learning one of the other teenagers who died had a criminal record. Now we'll hear from family members and the Prince George's County State's Attorney's concerns coming up tonight at 930. Meanwhile, D.C. crews today rushed to the rescue of a construction worker who fell three stories from a building in Northwest. This is a look here at that rescue. The building near 11th Street and N Streets, just a few blocks from the convention center. What led to this fall still under investigation tonight, but we do understand that worker was using a wooden ladder. D.C. Fire and EMS says the man is now in critical condition. And all new at 9 tonight, a high ranking Department of Defense official is charged with taking part in a legal dogfighting ring. Frederick Moorfield is one of two Maryland men facing these federal charges. Now, according to the Justice Department, the two exchange encrypted messages about dogfighting with people all across the country. And during the search of their homes, 12 dogs were recovered. Law enforcement also recovered veterinary steroids, training schedules, a bloodstained carpet, along with an electrical plug and jumper cables which are used to execute dogs that lose dog fights. 
Moorfield is a deputy chief information officer at the DOD. If convicted, he faces up to five years in prison. Several school districts here in our region are expecting to get money as part of a class action lawsuit against a partial owner of Juul, the electronic cigarette maker. That money could go towards efforts to curb the problem of youth vaping. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla takes a look at how big of a problem it is and what can be done to help. Right here in Prince William County, teenage vaping is a problem and by some metrics, it's only getting worse. But this county school district, as well as the school districts in Fairfax, Loudoun and in Prince George's County, Maryland, they're all expecting to get some money as part of that legal challenge and the settlement. And that money could go toward solving the problem that they say Jewel helped create. At a recent school board meeting in Prince William County, the board was briefed on vaping and it was told of the 300 three e cigarette violations in the 2018 19 school year and how it doubled to 639 last year. We do have some partners that have been um, diligent in supporting us, but definitely more is needed, especially for a school system this size. It's been a problem Fairfax County is also addressing. FCPS has SAPS or substance abuse prevention specialists in all of its high schools and a survey of self reporting and anonymous 8th, 10th and 12th graders show just over 5% of them have vaped in the last month. And while that's an improvement from a few years ago, the district knows it has work to do, saying it will use the money from the Jewel settlement to support our students' health and well-being. Prevention in this county has always been on the back burner. Back in Prince William County, Chrissy Falls urged the school board to hire additional SAPs. She serves on the county safe schools advisory committee and says the education they pass on to students can be valuable, as she says it has been in neighboring districts. Now we reached out to Fair Fairfax and Prince William County Schools to ask about this settlement and how that money could be spent. We are still waiting to set up a formal interview. Reporting in Prince William County, Max Marcella, DC News Now. All right, another beautiful night out there. Let's get another check on the forecast. The Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. Yeah, Janessa, tomorrow looks like a stunner too. Uh, yeah, we're actually looking at uh, pretty beautiful conditions across uh, the DMV, and we're going to continue to see that all week long across the region. So get excited about that. Uh, along with our daytime highs, they're going to be above average, back into the 80s. And so uh, really, we should be sitting middle 70s. So many spots, even tomorrow afternoon, going to be about 5 to 10 degrees above average for this time of year. We're getting spoiled by all these conditions. Enjoy this because the change starts to slowly but surely happen as we go into your weekend and into uh, next week. Even our overnight lows, they're a little bit better back into the lower 50s, a few 60s out there across the suburbs of uh, DC. So your evening planner, mostly clear skies, a few clouds that are going to work their way in overnight, especially across our higher terrain and valley areas. A little bit of dense fog trying to unfold, but really all in all, a very mild evening across uh, the DMV. It's due to this component here. High pressure is working its way in across all of the East Coast into uh, the Midwest, and so that's allowing the clearing. Here's our next big, strong cold front. I mean, it's going to allow our temperatures to really tumble. Uh, we'll take a look at that rain and temperature forecast coming up. All right, Janessa, thanks. We'll see you then. All new to an inmate who escaped the Virginia jail back in August has been named as a suspect in a case in Maryland. The Virginia Department of Corrections is accusing Nassim Rolak of stealing a car at gunpoint on September 1st in Gaithersburg. Rolak escaped from a Henrico County Hospital back in August 12th. Since then, a manhunt has been underway to get him back into custody. U.S. Marshal Service says Rolak should be considered armed and dangerous. The agency says if you see him, do not approach him. Immediately call authorities. And the Virginia Railway Express is considering adding weekend service for the first time ever. The VRE unveiled its proposed budget for fiscal year 2025. In addition to weekend service, the VRE is also considering raising fares by 5%. The budget also includes a proposal to allow children under 18 to ride free. VRE is accepting public comments online, in person, and also over the phone. A new forever stamp honors a legacy of late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. U.S. Postal Service unveiled the new stamps at the National Portrait Gallery in D.C. today. The stamps feature an oil painting of RBG wearing her iconic black robe and white collar. The stamps cost 66 cents each or $13.20 for a sheet of 20.